Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Uh, in this video, I mainly talk about one of the important uh, interview questions that is the difference between DMRS and SRS. In other words, um, the question would be like, when we have the DMRS uh, uh, in the system, then uh, why do we need SRS? Okay, so this is mainly in the uplink. Uh, this question has been asked, by, asked to me by one of the viewers, uh, and uh, this is one of the important interview question as well. Mm, similarly, in downlink, uh, the question is when we have DMRS, uh, uh, you know, why do we need, uh, you know, CSI RS? Okay, um, so I will answer uh, this one. Mm, so first, let me take a uh, division for DMRS and SRS. Uh, the first uh, point which I would be going to explain is with respect to the definition. Okay, so DMRS is nothing but uh, digital modulation reference signal. So we will try to understand the slot concept. So this is one slot, 14 OFDM symbols, and uh, the x-axis represents time, y-axis represents the frequency, or you can say subcarrier or bandwidth. Okay, at certain OFDM symbol uh, locations, uh, wherever I have marked green, there could be DMRS. So the purpose is of uh, the purpose is using this DMRS we gonna estimate the channel. Okay, channel estimation is performed. But why this channel estimation is required? This channel estimation is required to decode the data or equalize the uh, channel effects uh, across other data symbols. So from here uh, across other OFDM symbols, we use this channel estimate to perform the equalization so that uh, the data across these uh, uh, can be decoded okay so that is the main purpose of dmrs so then since we are going to decode the data what should be the condition the condition is channel estimate should be very accurate okay so it should be very accurate if channel estimates are not accurate then you are not able to decode the data very well then what happens so your bit error rates would increase right so this channel estimation uh, we are performing right it uh, depends on various uh, scenarios like if the channel is static then there could be only one one dmrs uh, location if the channel is fast varying for a high speed scenario uh, one just uh, one single dmrs is not sufficient we need to have a multiple uh, uh, dmrs symbols so, so uh, the DMRS could be uh, assigned even at a different OFDM symbols as well so that uh, the receiver would use some kind of interpolation techniques to get the better channel estimates okay so this is the main purpose I think you got the first uh, clarity with the DMRS now I will move to the SRS in case of SRS the name um, the name is sounding reference signal okay so this is also used to estimate the channel but uh, this channel estimates is mainly used to extract the channel quality information like a rack indicator and layer indicator and pre-coding matrix indicator and things like that. So in this case also it is required the channel should be very good but not so good to the extent of what we get across the DMRS. Okay? It depends on the situation, uh, depends on uh, the environment, uh, depending upon that, uh, um, we can live with a little lower quality channel estimates. But if you are able to estimate these things, that is well and good. Okay, that is one thing. So this SRS would be usually assigned, would be usually scheduled uh, across, uh, uh, you know, the last few OFDM symbols. It could be just one OFDM symbol or it could be uh, two or three, depending upon the scenarios. So, uh, let's say uh, you got the clarity. So, till this point, uh, let us say this is one difference. So, I will move on to the second one. Okay. Second one is with respect to uh, the frequency. Okay. I will just take the slot. Okay. So, then let's say. Okay. So, for second one, I will take the slot. Okay. I am just taking a slot like this. Now the thing is that, let's say for a UV number one, uh, the um, scheduled RBs or you can say resource elements in the frequency domain uh, is only this much. So let's say it could be some uh, 100 uh, uh, RBs uh, to 150 RBs. Then in this range only, the DMRS would be allocated for that particular rate. So in this range only, you know, the data is allocated and the DMRS is allocated here, DMRS uh, and here data, right? 
so so now the thing is that during uh, i mean using dmrs so whatever channel estimate we get uh, that is only across this particular uh, rb range or this particular bandwidth small bandwidth okay between 100 to 150 so in this case uh, we will not get the, any information about the channel uh, across other bands for that particular uv but let's say uh, you know the g node b uh, okay g node b wants to know the channel condi channel conditions for this particular uv um, even beyond this uh, scheduled rbs then then uh, that's where your srs would come into picture okay till this point let's say uh, you know number of wavedm symbols is just 12 so last 13th and 14th can be used for srs let's say now uh, for this particular uv number 1 uh, the srs can be scheduled uh, uh, let's say full bandwidth okay the complete uh, bandwidth uh, let's say it is scheduled so then uh, the channel quality information for this particular review can be uh, can be obtained for complete uh, uh, bandwidth okay and then uh, uh, accordingly uh, based on the channel quality information uh, it can schedule multi-layer or it can schedule or it can go for uh, you know uh, supporting higher mcs or it can even uh, say that okay when it uh, estimates it might come across the case that okay the channel is very good in this uh, rb ranges then for the next uh, um, upcoming slots for that particular uv you know next the scheduled rbs could be this this much in this range okay so this is uh, um, the second uh, aspect uh, in terms of frequency uh, there is a difference then uh, what could be the what are the other items see other items is srs people say it is mainly used in case of uh, uh, mimo right when you want to support mimo and things like that see what happens is that uh, mm, this is a slot okay so by default in the beginning when you start uh, the traffic or when you say i will say you know uh, uplink or downlink throughput then let's say by default you are going to schedule with only layer layer one layer one is not my mode right just uh, layer one but uh, now the thing is that uh, when it is scheduled like that uh, your dmrs so dmrs uh, is scheduled with just uh, uh, one port or what just one layer so in the other layer nothing is transmitted or it is a copy of the uh, same data would be transmitted okay but uh, uh, now you want to analyze and see uh, your channel conditions and uh, and you want to upgrade the system to layer 2 then what do you do you want to have the data even in in the other layer as well or in the other port as well so uh, the thing is that uh, you tra now tra now srs uh, comes into picture okay srs even though the PUSCH or your DMRS is transmitted in a single layer, SRS so you can transmit in uh, uh, two port. Okay, two port, uh, uh, and you can see um, from two port, uh, then you can you will get uh, uh, the channel. You will get the channel estimates from this, and from here you can analyze your uh, uh, rank indicator or layer indicator whether you can upgrade to layer two or not. Okay, so. That's why it is mainly you know uh, used for MIMO cases uh, and uh, and uh, you can upgrade uh, your number of layers. Even you can say four port also if you want to support four layers. But uh, there is one more uh, one more thing that is uh, for example already two layer is supported. Okay, already two layer is supported. In which case uh, the DMRS DMRS itself is already transmitting in two layers or, or two ports okay now the thing is that uh, now uh, due to the bad channel conditions um, now system has to you know downgrade to just one layer in this case what what we can do like uh, we have the information um, of this uh, you know the dmrs anyway sent in two layers right from here itself we can also get the channel quality information like rack indicator layer indicator and all these things that is when if dmrs is available for uh, higher ports we can use this dmrs 
only for that particular band okay then um, you can use this and you can bypass the SRS and you can see on the same allocated RBs okay on the same allocated RBs whether you can downgrade uh, your system or not right because from DMRS you will get channel estimates and from there you will see that okay the channel quality is very bad you know the rank indication is just one and in which case you can reduce for downgrading you can use the DMRS so there is no problem uh, but uh, for upgrading definitely you need SRS okay um, I hope uh, this is uh, uh, this is this uh, you you got it. See, main thing is for downgrading also. If you want to use, it should be like whatever the RBs that it is scheduled. Again, if you want to see uh, your channel quality for uh, for the bandwidth more than what is scheduled, uh, what is scheduled in the PUSCH then definitely uh, you need SRS okay even for downgrading you need SRS but uh, for the same scheduled RBs if you want to uh, analyze and uh, downgrade then uh, DMRS itself is sufficient so I hope uh, you got the clarity in this as well now, another point is that uh, um, see I was telling channel estimation should be accurate right so the thing is that uh, this is the slot uh, now UV number one uh, is has been allocated this much uh, resources. Let's say UV number two has been allocated this much resources. Okay, and basically resources are divided among the UVs, right? Uh, now, what about SRS? So the thing is that SRS, we have multiple uh, options uh, for SRS. That is, um, you can multiplex uh, the SRS. Uh, for different UVs so that you can accommodate more and more UVs uh, in this SRS resource um, so that we can try to get the you know channel quality information of various UVs in one shot so for that uh, the COM IDs are used COM2, COM4 things like that are used so that uh, in the frequency density okay in the frequency density you can obtain the orthogonality uh, among the uh, among the SRS resources uh, assigned for different UVs or you are you even you can use cyclic shift uh, in order to obtain the orthogonality uh, among the UVs if, if they are assigned with the same uh, frequency resources right so of course you can even allocate the different uh, symbol for different UVs uh, in which case uh, you will get the orthogonality in terms of time time domain okay so basically uh, here uh, it allows uh, to multiplex uh, the reference signal for multiple UVs uh, um, and um, and we can try to get the channel information um, across uh, different UVs uh, but uh, in DMRS case okay in DMRS if the UV number one is assigned with these number of R these number of RBs okay and uh, if uh, the DMRS is present in this uh, symbol particular symbol okay then in this in this uh, location it doesn't allow uh, the other UVs to multiplex its data okay in the normal uh, MIMO case but uh, it allows to multiplex only in one case that is uh, multi-user MIMO case okay so multi-user MIMO is also uh, then but, but again uh, what do they do in this case uh, they will have the orthogonality in the spatial domain a different antennas would be allocated so but uh, and even the OCC orthogonal cover codes are also used among the DMRS ports in order to get the orthogonality but here again not many UVs would be multiplexed in order to ensure that the channel quality should be better and um, and uh, we should not have too much interference from the other UVs right here multiplexing uh, could be like I would say four pair uh, or eight pairs like that maximum but in, in the SRS case how much UV can be multiplexed so we have 12 cyclic shifts and let's say even we have four com which means that uh, uh, you know we can have uh, uh, four UVs in the frequency domain um, so 12 fours are for 48 you can go for up to for 48 uh, uh, UVs that can be multiplexed in this particular case right so 
multiplexing is more in this case SRS, uh, whereas multiplexing is uh, not so much high on uh, the DMRS. Uh, and the two for a specific scenario like multi user MIMO, this uh, uh, case is uh, used. Otherwise, uh, we will go, we will use, uh, you know, non multiplexed case in case of MIMO uh, mainly, right? So, in, in MIMO also, we can use a multiplexing case, but it, should, it will be usually avoided uh, uh, in order to ensure that there is no much interference, uh, um, you know, among, uh, among the antennas. I think uh, this much uh, you got the clarity. Uh, so lots of differences you got it um, there could be follow up follow up questions uh, based on this uh, like uh, you know we are we are allocating SRS only at the end of the slot right in the last uh, slot then the question would be why can't we allocate them in the beginning what is the reason so I will let you guys to comment uh, uh, in the comment section in the answer for this this is also the interview question and um, what else? Uh, yeah, the similar concept can be explained for DMRS uh, uh, versus uh, the CSIRS. Okay, so that also uh, I will let you guys to comment. Uh, what are the basic differences? Why uh, CSIRS is required when we even even we have the DMRS? Okay, and uh, I hope uh, um, the concept is uh, uh, very clear. Uh, this has become lengthy, but still, I hope uh, you would enjoy watching this video, even if it is 15 uh, minutes. And one more point is that uh, see, most of my videos I am recommending to watch it in uh, 1.5x so that uh, you know this uh, 15 minutes uh, of a video you can uh, you know watch it in 10 minutes. So, so don't uh, get uh, uh, distracted when you the moment you see that the video is about 16 or 17 minutes. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye bye.